the? How am I doing here? It's the strangest dream I've ever... I've never fallen asleep on the floor. Well, that's not true. But not in this room before. Not until... How? Weird. Anyways, welcome back to the show, folks. Today... Getting the sleep out of my eyes. Today, we are going to be looking at something truly interesting, uh, truly amazing, life-changing, in fact, when it comes to, well, life in general uh, and keeping you alive. You know, there's like three very important things on the Camino de Santiago that are often overlooked. Maybe some are held in higher regard than others when it comes to preparing for your Camino. One is your backpack. Super important. It's Ultra important. It carries your entire life. Everything you need is in that bag. Second is your shoes. Arguably, your shoes may be more important than your backpack at the end of the day. And third, water. Water is the most important thing. And always, mostly always by the newbie, overlooked. Uh, being that we are 80% water, it's important that we get as much as we possibly can always in us. Uh, you know, people say you need calories, you need food, you do. But you need water most importantly, because that is what keeps you going at the end of the day. That is what keeps you all moved up, too. Often the problems that we run into on the Camino are more water-related than we care to admit or even know. The more water in your system, the better off you're going to be. Can you drink too much water? Yeah, sure. Can you drown? Yeah, people drown. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the right balance of walking and hydration and when you don't have that when you're not your body's not in balance like that you start running into problems what we'll be doing is going through my personal water hydration setup piece by piece i will give you the name brand of everything that i'm using i'll put links below i will make it super easy for you uh whereas for me when i first began my journey into putting together my you know, pack really um it was harder it was a, little, a lot more difficult to find different components of this kit than it is today. It's actually a lot easier, but I will make it much more easier for you and for you and even you, Steve. And by the end of this video, I promise you, you will be a lot better off than 99.99% of all the other pilgrims out there, hydrationally speaking, of course. Ah, oh, don't mind if I do. Huh. we're back. So before we jump into the different components that make up my personal pilgrim hydration system of awesomeness, let's go through why I don't think Camelback bags, hydration bags systems are really all the rave. In fact, I question them. Let's question them together. Okay. Here is your everyday run of the mill hydration bag. Um, many of you are familiar with this, or if you're, you know, researching your Camino right now, you probably stumbled upon these. Many of you have probably met, read a blog and uh, maybe they recommended to use one. This will fit in the back of your backpack. Say this was your backpack. It's not yours, but it could be. On the inside of the backpack, there is an inner pocket, more often than not, that a hydration bag will fit in. And there will be also an internal, like, uh, running little door for the tube so it can come out and go down your, your strap and so on and so forth. But anyway, so this lives in the back of your backpack, which is all fine and good. It keeps it out of the way and it keeps your pack balanced while you're hiking. However, you know, with all the stuff in, and you have in there as you're taking your pack on and off throughout the course of the day, there is a chance. I mean, this stuff is made out of, you know, strong material, but it's still, it's, at the end of the day, it's a lot like a water balloon, so it can still burst. That can happen. Does it happen often? No. Does it happen? It does happen. But again, um, it really, it's, it's just about risk. How much risk do you want to take? Because when this does burst, if it does burst rather, um, that's all your stuff in your pack that's going to get wet and need to dry out. And it just sort of caused some needless problems that could have been um, averted had you followed my perfect pilgrim hydration system, which we're going to. Anyway, so that is one problem with the, with the, the, um, 
hydration bag, at least in my mind. Again, to each his own. If you use one of these and it works for you, awesome. I just uh, can't get behind anything. Every time you want to fill this up or add more water to it, you have to pull it out of your backpack. You have to physically take your backpack off and get to the bladder. When you're drinking from this during the course of the day, this bladder gets smaller and smaller. Um, so much so that stuff inside your pack starts moving around. So now when you do go to refill this up, you have to repack your pack just the way you had it around your full bag because you just filled, refilled your bag. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Another problem I have with the bladder is you can't see it. It's tough to gauge how much water you actually have left. And if you're doing a, a longer Camino like the Villa de la Plata or just longer stretches on the Meseta, you need to know how much water you have. So that is another strike against the bladder for me. Three, it might be number three. It's tough to clean. And granted, this is a wide mouth one. I mean, really, you can only get so much in here. And this one actually has a splitter. I don't know if you can see that right here, where it divides. Um, tough to clean with a sponge and whatnot. You can also use, you know, tablets to clean inside here. But for me, it's just, it's a pain in the butt to clean. Not only is it hard to clean, it's just hard to dry. And there's no real good way of drying this except by air. I mean, you can get a towel in there to, to sop up some of the moisture and then leave it to air dry, prop it open to air dry. But again, it's just more work at the end of the day and it's not guaranteed. Especially we're in Spain, Northern Spain, depending on what month, there's more moisture in the air. And again, the last c concern of mine is it pops. If it's overfilled or if it's filled, whatever the case may be, if the stuff shifts around in the air, you're tightening your back, whatever. It's a water balloon. It's a water balloon. So who needs it? And that's why we're gonna focus on my system. So let's take a look at this, shall we? Here it is, folks. Drum roll, please. Huh? Can you see this? This is my setup. It looks simple enough, right? Kind of. One guy on the last community asked me if I was breathing oxygen because I had this tube sticking out of my yeah, off my strap, he thought it was, I don't know why he thought it was oxygen, but maybe it does look like, I maybe more like hydrogen. No, no, not hydrogen. Helium, I meant helium. I meant helium. So let's look at this one piece at a time, shall we? First component of my system is a good old fashioned classic Nalgene bottle. You can't go wrong by these things. They're awesome, actually. This is a 32 ounce one. They also come in 48 ounce. Size, they come in all different sizes, actually, but I would say between this one, 32 ounce, and the 48, you're good to go. On the Camino Frances, I only need to fill this each day once, most of the time, all the time. 98.9, 99.99% of the time, I need to fill this and I'd be good all day. Um, that's not true at all. There was many times I stopped at Fountains. Whatever, I'm lying. Um, my point is, nothing beats a Nalgene ball, especially when you compare it to uh, a flimsy water bladder. These things are durable, they'll last forever. This one right here is probably four years old, maybe, unless I'm confusing for another one of mine. Doesn't matter, these things will last forever. I, I have friends that have had these for you know almost 20 years, the same one. So let's look at where this shines. It's durable. You're gonna drop this, it's not gonna break. You can drop this hundreds of feet and it'll not break, you'll find it. Uh, another bonus, the wide mouth, easy to fill easy to clean, easy to get in there with a sponge on a stick or whatever. Super easy to clean with a brush. Um, super easy to fill in a river, by a fountain. Again, you can't beat a Nalgene bottle. Okay, so let's look at some of the pros. Durable, ultra durable. Uh, number two, wide mouth, super easy to fill, super, super, super easy to clean. Can you say that about a bladder? Not so much. It's leak proof. This is not gonna burst on you. I guarantee this will never burst on you. Between the 32 ounce and the 48 ounce uh, bottles, Nalgene bottles, they are high capacity. Uh, another bonus, they're graduated. That's right, they have a degree. No, they're graduated much like a measuring cup. So if you needed to, if you were staying in an Airbnb and you were cooking and there wasn't a measuring cup and you needed to, one for your whatever you're gonna impress your friends with, there's one right here. It's graduated so you can figure out how much water you have on. You can also figure out Real quick and easy, how much water you have left, how much water you need. You don't see this on a bladder, and even if it wasn't a bladder, which I think it actually might be on that bladder that I threw over there to the side that I keep looking at. Gets in the corner, like a redheaded stepchild. Um, that is graduated, and I guess that's just for filling purposes, but this is utilitarian. You can definitely use this around a campfire even. 
to cook with and no matter how much water you're measuring out. It's BPA free meaning that you can put boiling water in this and don't have to worry about plastics leaching into the water and potentially giving you cancer. <laughs> you can't lose the cap. Lots of people use other types of bottles too, spring water bottles, cheap bottles, especially ultralight hikers. Um, they swear by them. However, the caps you lose. I mean, you can lose the cap outside in the wilderness where it's gonna take a thousand years to uh, break down. Uh, this, you're not gonna lose, it's attached to here. So another bonus, you'll never lose the cap. It's made in the USA and it's dishwasher safe. Yeah, dishwasher safe. That said, and maybe I'm jumping ahead, but don't ever put the hydration tube in the dishwasher. Just don't, trust me on that. So the Nalgene bottle is the first part or first component in my setup. Next we have the bottle sock. The bottle what? The bottle sock. Um, this is a neoprene sleeve in much the same spirit as a beer koozie for the serious hiker. This is a key, key piece of the hydration puzzle for me, especially when it comes to keeping your water cool. If not cool, definitely not hot, which can happen with hydration systems of all different sorts. But this protects the bottle from the sun. It also keeps the cold in. It's an insulator, so it keeps the cold in and keeps the heat out. It also keeps the condensation down from the bottle, which will keep the water colder longer. So that's huge. Uh, also, if you're using hot water in here, as I mentioned before, boiling water or whatever, this protects your hand. If it's too cold, it protects your hand, depending on the weather situation. I've added a little clip here to mine. And this comes in handy for when you're at the hostels. If you're in a bunk, if you're in the bottom bunk especially, you can attach this right next to you on the cross beams of the bunk and have your tube coming out and you can you know, have access to water during the course of the night. So, and it also works for other, you know, other situations when you need a hook on your water bottle, which could happen. It could happen. So a bottle sock, I couldn't live without it. I love this thing. The next piece of the puzzle is, now this is kind of a surprise. Ooh, look at that. What is this? Let's just take this right off. Watch how easy this comes off. This is a filter, but you probably knew that. But it's not just any filter, this is the Epic water filter made in the USA, Colorado. And this bad boy is what removes 99.99% of water contaminants. It's also BPA free, sensing a theme here. It removes microplastics, it removes chlorine, it removes lead, viruses, bacteria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's the perfect, it's, it's pretty much your best friend on the Camino. Again, the water is often safe there, but why take a chance? You really, I mean, why? Especially with this ever-changing world we live in. So it's just another another safety precaution I take when on the Camino. And I love it. You probably will get three, four months use out of this filter. You're only gonna need it for 30 to, depending on how long your Camino is, but you can definitely do a, a two month, three month Camino. If you're gonna go that far or that slow, you can use this. It'll last the entire time. It's awesome. I used this on two Caminos so far, and it's the water tastes great. There's no plasticky taste. It's awesome. So that goes inside the system. Next, we have the cap. This cap comes with um, a tactical hydration system by source. And, you know, though my Nalgene already has a lid, this obviously comes off while I'm using the system. And this fits snugly on the bottle. That said, with this kit comes a few other cap sizes to be used on different size bottles. Um, one being you know, your regular uh, one and a half liter spring water bottle or the other size mouth bottles that you can buy. But I mean, it, it's like four different options it comes with. So you don't necessarily need to use the Nalgene, although I highly recommend it for reasons I mentioned previously. Um, so it's a great kit. And you will also see that this plugs right into the filter. Now, what I've noticed about these filters, Epic filters, is they still sell them. They're still available, but they're now white as opposed to orange. So if you see with my link below a white one, know that it's the same one. I don't know why they've done away with the orange one. I personally like it. But hey, maybe it's easier to tell if it's dirty with the white version. I, I can only speculate. Um... So yeah, that will connect to the drinking straw inside. 
goes inside the mouth of the bottle. And next, we get to the tube. This is the tube, folks. All right, shocker. A little damp because I've been using it. The tube goes right over the straw, or the straw goes inside the tube. It goes down and connects here. There you go, it's locked on. This tube actually is part, kind of part of the kit, the technical convert tube by source. I've just made some alterations to it. Uh, the one that comes with the convert tube is already covered. Covered in what you ask? Well, the next piece of kit, if you will. This, this is an insulator, a tube insulator that goes over, well, <laughs> the tube. This I actually thought I came up with on my own. One time I was hiking in the desert a couple years back and I was using my hydration system, uh, a, an earlier version of it. And I noticed that the water that sat in the tube in between sips was getting warm. It also, that predated my my finding the bottle sock too. So my, bo my bottle was warming up in the hot Arizona sun as was the water that was left in the tube. And I was like, you know, if there's only a way to cover up the tube Maybe they make like a neoprene cover. Sure enough, they do. I Googled it and one existed. Awesome. One less thing for me to invent. So I think you understand how that works. That protects the water in the tube because water will remain in the tube in between sips. And this protects the water temperature on the inside of the bottle. So it keeps your bottle of water cold for much of the journey. Um, this will take you uh, actually all day. It'll keep your water cold and it won't get warm. So I highly recommend a insulated hydration system such as this. And again, the great thing about the source converter tube kit is it can turn pretty much any bottle that you choose to have into a hydration, an instant hydration system just by swapping out the cap you're using. That said, if you're doing a longer trail with less bars and cafes in between and you have another bottle of water you picked up along the way, Rather than pour that in here, you might save that bottle and just change out the cap and screw that and leave this uh, analogy on one side of your backpack and leave the, um, the new bottle or, and attach this to the new bottle on the other side of your backpack. What do I mean by the outside of your backpack? Well, that's just it, folks. That's one of the advantages here, as opposed to the camelback being in your, or the camelback bladder, or just the water bladder being in your backpack out of sight, and often out of mind, often out of mouth. This is on the side of your backpack. It's in the side pocket. And that's another great thing about Nalgene bottles is most ba modern backpacks today are designed with side pockets specifically designed to hold Nalgene size bottles, 32 ounce bottles. So it's another win. Also, another benefit of that is it's right there where you can reach it. Um, if you're at a fountain, you need to refill, boom, boom, boom. You don't even have to take your backpack off. With a bladder, you're gonna take off the backpack. You're gonna step out of the waist, but you saw so many steps. This is just, it's quick, easy. Again, no muss, no fuss to repeat myself because I do. Another thing I should note is this is the Helix mouthpiece. It's a bite down mouthpiece. You bite down on it, then you suck in the water. Um, if you have a problem with your teeth, maybe you have dentures or whatever the case may be, um, and can't bite down on this, fear not. They also make another one called the Storm, I believe. And it's it's a lot like this where it, ha it locks, twisting this locks it. So you would untwist it and just suck on it. You don't have to bite down on it. The only thick problem with that is, and it's not really a problem, it's just you have to lock it before you're done with it. Otherwise water will drip everywhere. So there are other options for mouthpieces. Know that if biting is not your thing. Okay, so maybe it's time we talk about cleaning it. How does one clean this? Well, it's again, it's so much easier than working with a bladder. You're probably gonna to wanna to clean this on the Camino maybe three to four times. Uh, it's not gonna to get too dirty because you're using it every day. You're constantly drinking that water. Um, Source makes their tubing and their gear, their uh, plastic components out of bacteria-free plastic. So whatever, stuff that fights off sketchy things that you need to worry about, like bacteria and virus. I don't know how much I believe that, but I believe it a little, un poquito. That said, I do clean mine on the trail four times. What I use is Bottle Bright tablets. These are awesome. This is a lot like uh, denture cleaners of your, I've already mentioned false teeth, now denture cleaners. See the correlation? Do you see the correlation? 
However, these are better, from what I understand, better than denture cleaners because they're just more environmentally friendly. They're biodegradable and they're also chlorine free. Again, sticking with that theme. It's really the same though as denture cleaners or, or Alka-Seltzer. It's plop, plop, fizz, fizz, or whatever relief it is. You take one of these bad boys, looks like this. Small enough, see, you don't need to take the entire box. So you just take four of these with you. You might not even use them all. I think you should use them all though. Again, once a week at the end of each week, you open this pack up, drop the tablet in there, add hot water and let it sit. This can be done at the albergue. It can be done in Airbnb, wherever. Let it sit in the sink, fill it up to here with the water. It'll bubble. The effervescent bubbles will do its job cleaning. I mean, you really don't even have to scrub this. In fact, you don't have to scrub this. It says on the website, it does all the hard work for you, all the heavy lifting, if you will. Not only does it clean out all the gunk and uglies, it also kills the odor. Yeah, these things can get pretty stinky. You know, and that's another tip I should throw in there is don't ever use this to hold wine or alcohol of any sort. You'll see people at the wine fountain filling this up. Don't do that. It tends to stick around in these things. It makes the water taste gamey hey. after the fact, and you don't want that. If you want that, though, drink out of one of those leather, like, Boda bags. Those are uh, guaranteed to be gamey. Oh, dear. And you know, back to the, using these tablets, being that they're biodegradable, chlorine free of the earth, you can use these anywhere. You can use these outside too and not have to worry about contaminating groundwater or anything like that. So it's almost guilt free. It actually, aside from this packaging, it's guilt free. So yes, I highly recommend this brand. Links below. Moving on to cleaning the tube. This is the part that is most often than not overlooked by people. Um, some people will say that you, it's the same people that probably don't wash their jeans. They say, you know, you don't need to wash those things. And source might even indicate that on their site that you don't really need to wash this. You do need to wash this. I don't care what anyone says. However, don't ever wash this in the dishwasher, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, because I did that. The, I've killed a couple tubes, putting this in the dishwasher, the top rack. I don't know if it's the heat. I don't know what it is in there, but it eats up the inside lining of the tube. So never wash this in the dishwasher. What you can do, however, is with some water left over from bottle bright put some of that in here and just go you know hold your finger you can take this off too take off the mouthpiece hold at each end and work the water around in here and then like a lasso roll or you know whip it around your head and keep all the air or i'm sorry like a lasso rip it. lasso 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 like a lasso whip it around your head that should get out most of the water and then hang it upside down in the albergue or whatever, maybe while you're waiting for your clothes to dry, have this on the clothes rack as well. Let that air out. It's probably not gonna get completely dry overnight, but again, it should be fine. And then the next morning when it's reattached, suck a little water through and just spit it out. In case there's any residual like soapy goodness in there. Next, if you wanna go the extra mile, I brought one of these with me because I'm a, I'm a dork. I'm definitely not a lightweight hiker, but this is just, it's like a giant, pipe cleaner or a test tube cleaner and this is made i believe this is camelback so i'll have a link below to this as well but this is great because once i have the soap in there i just push this in there and i work this brush through and this is so there's no mold build up this is better at home but i did bring this with me that pack you know by not using a, a, a water bladder that pocket the back, the back of my backpack is not necessarily empty i put papers in there and stuff i want to keep flat but i also this is i mean this is so small and I put a little Velcro wrap thing here. And uh, this keeps it, you know, for like your your wires and cords. I use it on this as well. And I keep this in the back pocket flat. And I use this four times a week too. Uh, at the same time, cleaning my bottle to clean out the tube. And it's awesome. I just feel, you know, I feel safer. I feel clean. I feel less icky and violated, which is rare on the Camino. It's rare. Oh, you know, and looking back at this, now I talked about the Convert tube by source, that whole kit that I used part of, that kit looks a little different. Uh, the complete kit, it comes already with a tube cover on it and different components that clip on and off, which is great and whatnot. But the thing is, the problem I found in here is the only part that comes off is the mouthpiece. It pops out. And so it's tough to get in while well, it's the mouthpiece and this other end would connect to the cap. And they were like little like caps already in there that were tough to get out. So what I did is I just cut that off and instead I just, see, I just plug it right into there and it's not, 
as quick and easy as, you know, their, their pull on and pull off system. Not as quick and easy as this. And see how this comes off, just like that. But it's also, you know, with this system, you can't get the brush in there. And if I'm gonna carry this brush with me, I'm gonna use it. So I cut that end off and I just plug this in with a little force and it stays, it's perfectly fine, it seals. Um, so you do you at the end of the day, but this is a little modification I made on mine. Now, let's look at how this works in your backpack. Here's a smaller backpack, but it's the same design, same idea in mind. So rather than being in your backpack, the water bottle is right here on the side. This is where it lives. And it's just easy to grab. See, it lives right there, side pocket of the bag, goes through the loop on the backpack strap. Most backpack straps have a loop or two there. If they don't, they also make nylon webbing, uh, snappable ones that you can buy and add on after the fact. And also on the strap, you will see this magnet clip right here. This one we've sewn on, however. This, does not, this is not originally part of the bag. It's just strapping. Uh, sewn on by hand, might I add. On my other bag, just dangles. It's a dangler. It's a longer hose, it dangles. This one, for the smaller bag, it's clips right there, so keeps everything in place. Uh, they also make other magnetic clips too that work, some work better with the naked tube as opposed to the neoprene tube than others. This brand right here, however, let's show you, is wide enough to fit over the neoprene tubing on the tube. Oh, here's another uh, tip for you um, when it comes to water and keeping it cold. All along the way, there are cafes and bars. Be sure to ask for ice. Hielo. Hielo. I will put the spelling right here. Yeah, ask for ice. You can always add that to your bottle as well. It'll keep it cold. And with a neoprene covering the bottle sock, it's guaranteed to stay cold. Uh, another trick, if you're doing an Airbnb or maybe you're staying in a little, um, in a, uh, a more executive pilgrim kind of um, albergue, you may have access to a fridge or a freezer. If that's the case, before you go to bed that night, fill up your bottle halfway with water or even a quarter with water and put it in the freezer, cap open, put it in the freezer. Then make yourself a note, make yourself a reminder on your phone to remember your water bottle. But the next day, it'll be frozen. It'll be a huge ice cube at the bottom. Then fill the rest with water and you're good to go. The filter will sit on top of that, the tube inside. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have cold water all day. That said, however, if you're using a metal bottle, uh, some people do, some people use the stainless steel, they swear by it, they say it's easier to clean, uh, it's not plastic, people have their reasons. Don't do my freezer tip with this, don't. See the bottom on this? It's like one of those like rocky children's punching bag toys of your, did I say your? I've said your like three times already. Your, I never say your. Anyways, I never say you were. Um, the bottom blew out. The ice must have expanded and gone down. I'm pretty sure, I know the cap was off. Uh, this bottle is also like 15 years old. I've had it forever. I love this bottle, but I can't stand it up now on, the, uh, on anything uh, without it falling over. So it'll just live in, it'll just live like this. It's living the best life it can as we all are. No, no. So yeah, don't use metal in the freezer. That trick does not apply to metal or steel bottles. One last thing I should mention too, is that when it comes to the insulator tubes, um, you can get these in so many different colors and patterns. So, I mean, if you're trying to accessorize for your Camino, some do. Keep that in mind. Again, there'll be a link below for all of these things, but this is it folks, that was it. This is the best kit, but most importantly, Remember to subscribe, comment, and like. I know, don't stop, don't stop, don't change the channel now. Just do that. Pick up your phone, find this video, this very video, and like it. And subscribe, please. I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, folks, you know what I'm going to say. You know it. Faked it. Faked it. Just, the whole episode's been kind of like a dream. When you coming up?
in this stuff. <laughs>